Hello everyone, um, I'm here today to kind of talk to you about Apple Classroom. It's rolling out very soon. Um, just kind of walk you through a couple of the features so you know what's going on and you know how to uh, manage your classes and everything within the uh, app. Okay, so if you open up uh, Apple Classroom for the first time, you're going to see that you have a list of classes. And from that list, you're just going to select whichever class you're currently teaching or about to teach. And you're going to see all of your students. So it defaults to kind of this app view, I'm going to call it, where it shows you all of the students and it shows you a little thumbnail of the app that they're using. This is one of my favorite screens. It's a great screen to just kind of glance at and check and see who's using what app and if it's supposed to be the app that they're using. Very quick, very simple, very easy. You'll notice that in the sample class there are two students who are grayed out. Those students are either absent or they have their Bluetooth turned off. For Apple Classroom to work they have to have both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on. So if you notice that you have a student in your class and they are grayed out it means that they have turned off their Bluetooth. Um, right now we're recommending that you remind them to turn it on and that the expectation is that they have their Bluetooth turned on throughout all class. If you see a kid and he drops off of Bluetooth and is doing something on his iPad or her iPad or what have you, um, what's worked out well in my class and what we're continuing to recommend is that you take the iPad from the kid for the rest of the period. Uh, if they are going to actively circumnavigate our monitoring software, then they don't get the privilege of having an iPad for that period. Please give it to them back uh, by the end of the period uh, so that they can go to their next class and use it in the next class, but we've seen that once we take an iPad away uh, once or twice, generally the kids are pretty good about keeping the Bluetooth on. They may complain about it draining their battery. Bluetooth does not significantly drain their battery too much. It does drain it a little bit faster, but as long as they come to school with it charged or have charged it throughout the day or part of the day, then they should be fine battery-wise. If they have 5% battery in your class, Bluetooth on or off isn't really going to help them out. They're going to run out of battery very, very quickly. Okay, so this is the general view. You'll notice that there are uh, five buttons across the top, open, navigate, lock, um, screens, and group. <clears throat> so we're going to kind of walk through those buttons a little bit, and we're also going to show you um, how to use class settings as well as individual student settings. The settings, whether class or student-wise, they're the same. It's just who it applies to. So the open, the navigate, the lock, that's the same process if you're doing it for a class. It'll do the same thing as if you're doing it for an individual student. There's just a different way to get to it if you're doing it for a personalized student versus everyone. All right, so um, very quickly, Open will open any app that you want them to. Uh, you have to have it downloaded to open it, and they have to. If they don't have it uh, downloaded, then it's going to kind of push them to the app store where they can download it. Um, Navigate will let will have you force them to navigate to either a iTunes U course, an iBook page, or a bookmarked Safari website. Um, screens will let you see all of their screens at one time, and then groups will allow you to create custom groups if you'd like to um, assign things to specific students, but not all students, and you don't want to do it individually. Right underneath those buttons, you'll notice that there's a couple of groups already created. Classroom creates dynamic groups based off of what app they're using. So you'll see that I have an all group, which is all my students, and then um, my students who are there are working in Notability. So there's a Notability group. If you were to tap that screen button, um, it will switch over, and now you'll see everyone's screens. Uh, this can be very useful. I find it not quite as user-friendly just because the screens are very small and it's just a little bit trickier uh, to see everything. However, this is nice, let's say if they're doing something on a website and you're not quite sure if they're on the correct website or things like that and you don't want to maybe walk up next to them because you don't want to tip them off that you're onto them, you can tap on screens and now you'll be able to see their screen you'll be able to see if they're on a different website. Because on the regular app view, it'll just say Safari because they're still on Safari, but they're on a website they're not supposed to be on. Uh, if you tap on Groups, this is where you can create your group. To create a group, you just name it. Um, I've named mine Restricted Access. Um, then you just tap on the students that you would like to select in the group, and then tap Done. And now you can do all of those buttons on the top for just that specified group that you've created. There might be a couple of nice reasons to do this. One would be if you have some students who just need that little bit of extra structure, then you can create a group with those students and you can force open and lock them in certain apps or force open and lock them um, to a website or your iTunes U course, things like that. 
Another reason you might do it would be a little bit more instructional. Let's say you're doing groups and you want um, the group leaders to download a certain app or you want the group leaders to do something in a certain app. You could assign the group leaders to that group and you could force open that app or you could send them to the app store instead of telling them you know what app to search for and all that you could just have the app store automatically open and direct them straight, straight to the app that you wanted. So there's both punitive as well as instructional purposes that you could use for groups. Now let's say um, here I have a class and I've got a bunch of groups and you'll notice that they are very dynamic and so some have changed and we have a, a little friend who is in 8-ball pool, the bane of my existence. I don't know why kids love it, but they absolutely love 8-ball pool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the different individual settings you can use for students who maybe are off task or um, you want to exemplify their work or things like that. So if I tap on that student, you'll notice that a lot of the buttons are the same as on the top. I have open, I have navigate, lock, I have airplay, which is a little bit different, and passwords, um, and show screen. The two buttons on the far left are grayed out. That's because those are meant for if you have a class set of iPads, and since we're a one-to-one -one district, uh, we'll not have access to those two buttons because we're not assigning iPads or logging kids out. They're taking them with them. Um, AirPlay next to it um, is not the most beneficial. I, at first, I thought it'd be a great feature. There's a better way to show kids screens because with AirPlay, you do still have to jump off of the screen. You have to hit AirPlay, then a code will appear. The whole type the code in, everything. So it's still, it's no faster doing on an Apple Classroom, but there is a faster way to show kids screens to everyone that we'll talk about in a second. Um, and then the other one, passwords, or password, that's to reset an Apple ID password, um, but our Apple IDs aren't set up the, the right way to have access to that. So we're not, teachers are not able to uh, reset student passwords. They'll still have to go down to tech to have that reset. Um, so with the exception of those buttons that really aren't the most user friendly, uh, I'm going to walk through what the other buttons look like, the open and navigate and things like that. So if I tap on open, this is the screen that appears. Um, I have just different apps that I can open um, and it's all of the apps on my iPad. The students, if they don't have an iPad then they, or don't have a certain app, they will, it'll navigate them to the App Store. The important thing is at the very bottom, there's a little toggle that says lock in app after opening. That is if you would like to open the app and then not allow them to leave that app. Uh, this could be very useful for students who get off task. Also, uh, if kids are taking a certain quiz in a certain app or tests in exam login, um, this prevents them, it disables their home button and things like that, so they're not able to navigate out of that app. So it's a very useful, it might be a very useful feature for you. You're definitely going to want to make sure, if you want them locked in the app, to toggle that on. The next one, Navigate, uh, it's very, very similar to uh, the Open, except it's just for iBooks, iTunes U, and Safari. Please remember, though, Safari, it does need to be a bookmarked website, so you do need to go onto Safari and bookmark it first, otherwise you're not going to be able to do it. You just can't type in the URL um, into the thing. So if we go back, let's say I have my student and I want to uh, lock his screen because I'm really just not very happy with what he's doing right now and I need to redirect him and focus him. He's not paying attention while I'm talking. I'm going to tap on the lock button and it's gonna, you're going to see a screen that looks something like this and tells me that I've locked the student's screen. On that student's iPad, they see this screen. So it shows that it's been locked by the teacher. Um, they can turn the screen off. When they turn it back on, it'll look like this. Um, their home button has been disabled, things like that. A student could hard reset their iPad. So they could hold down the power button for 30 seconds or so, and it will reset their iPad, or restart their iPad, rather, sorry. Um, and if they do a hard restart, it will open them back into just regular operations. Um, so just please be aware of that. This is not a hard and fast the bricking the iPad at all or forcing an iPad to be uh, not, not usable. They can do a hard restart. Um, if that's the case, they should pop back up on iTunes U, um, or I'm sorry, on Apple Classroom, and you should be able to see them from there as well. So that's another conversation you could have with a student. Last but not least, I want to talk about the uh, best way that I found to show student screens um, because it's the fastest. When you see that view of the students and you see the uh, show screen on the individual view, it's going to look like this on your iPad. It's going to take it and it's just going to 
maximize it, not to a full screen, but a pretty large screen. Um, and you can see the students in Notability working on Punnett squares. And you can see that it shows the work fairly large. This is what I like as the best view to show students' work, because all I have to do is tap that Done button, and it'll jump me right back into Apple Classroom, and I can tap on another student's work. It'll show up. It's much faster and more seamless, because I don't have to get off of the uh, Apple TV. So I like this view much more than the AirPlay. Um, it doesn't ki give the kid as much freedom to do things um, as AirPlay does, but I think it's a lot more useful just to show student work and student exemplars. So that's been a brief overview of Apple Classroom. If you have any questions, please see either your tech coach or app specialist in the building. Um, I think this is a great app both for classroom management, but also to, uh, for instructional to show students screens and to group students and things like that. I think it does have some great instructional benefits as well. All right, thank you very much. Bye.